Hi everyone, Craig here, and welcome to episode 5 of season 3 of the Tiny Tropical Garden. And in this week's video, I'll introduce you to an exciting new exotic plant I'll be adding to the garden, as well as walking you through how I propagate this streptocarpus. I love having streptocarpus as houseplants because they just produce blooms upon blooms upon blooms and you can actually get some species and cultivars that bloom for 12 months of the year. And last year I used them outdoors in the warmer summer months as an exotic garden plant. And I think they worked really well and looked great and this year I'd like to dot more of them around the garden so I need to propagate more plants from the one houseplant I already have and I'm going to do this by using leaf cuttings. The key thing with streptocarpus is they are actually quite easy to propagate. Now, I don't want to jinx myself here because mine might not work. But by using one leaf, you should be able to grow multiple new plants. So obviously, the first step is just to make sure you're using a healthy and happy plant from which you're going to propagate your new plants and then find a good, strong growing leaf. Ideally a newer leaf rather than one of the older ones. I've just pinched off this leaf. It is a slightly older leaf, but I'd like to use it because it's already slightly damaged and it will just tidy up the mother plant as well. Now, as I said before, there are two ways you can cut this leaf for leaf propagation. And the first is by slicing the leaf into two parts by just cutting along the line of the midrib on each side of it to cut the midrib out and then you can lay those leaves horizontally in compost. But I'm only using small round nine centimeter pots, so I'm gonna do it a different way. Using a sharp knife to avoid tearing the leaf, I'm just cutting small sections out from the leaf from top to bottom. It is really important when you're doing this to make sure that you keep the top of the leaf always pointing upwards because if you put these leaf sections into the compost upside down, they are not going to root. And you can see I'm just doing this by keeping mine in order with the top of the section always pointing upwards. It is very easy to forget which way is up if you're not careful. I'm going to use a well-draining multi-purpose compost. Ideally, you'd mix in a bit of perlite just to help with the drainage and prevent the cutting material from rotting, but I didn't have any perlite to hand. So this should be okay. And then you just gently insert each leaf section with the basal end, that's the bottom end of the leaf, into the soil. You want it maybe half a centimeter, a centimeter deep, so that it's in firm enough that it's not gonna flop over. And that gives enough good contact with the soil for roots to form. And a quick tip, as something that I always do, is I just tilt my leaves slightly backwards so that that top surface of the leaf can still photosynthesize if you point it towards the sun, which once the leaf cutting has formed roots will help feed new growth and hopefully speed up the growth of your new plantlets. I am a big fan of propagating new plants from cuttings, especially exciting ways like this, like leaf cuttings. It's just a really quick way to bulk up your collection of plants and cuttings are a lot faster, usually, than germinating new plants from seed. And if you get really good at propagation and luck is on your side, then you can swap some of these new plants for other exciting plants with friends and family. It's a win-win. The next key step is to give your potted up leaf cutting material some water. You want the soil to be nice and moist but not soaking wet because as I said before, you don't want anything to allow rot to kick in. I'll let this water run through the soil to make sure it's nice and moist and then I'll pour away any excess water because I don't want the pots sitting with their feet in water. As well as reusing the old plastic pots, I'm reusing this old plastic bag that some of our veg came in. I'm going to wrap the pots in a plastic bag because it helps seal in the humidity. You don't want the cuttings to dry out. You can use a propagator, a humid greenhouse, or if you're like me and you're tight on space, just a windowsill will be fine. 
because it keeps the cuttings in good light and the plastic bag will keep that humidity in. My own mini windowsill greenhouse. Now a quick search on Google tells me it will take four to six weeks for tiny plants to start to form. I will keep you updated. And here's that new plant I'm adding to the tiny tropical garden this year. Its common name is the Chinese lantern plant and its Latin name is Abutilon megapotanicum, which I love saying because it's one of those Latin names that makes you sound really intelligent. Abutilon megapotanicum. Anyway, this is a great plant for me to add to the tropical garden because it flowers over a long period of the year. And it's a semi evergreen plant that is sort of trailing and or twining if you help to tie it into some posts or trellis. I'm going to find this one a sheltered spot in the garden with a bit of warmth because I don't want these delicate flowers and leaves to get scorched by that salty wind that beats up the rest of my garden. I'll decide that in the coming weeks. I'll let the garden warm up a bit first before I start planting things out. Now I'm just going to take a moment to say thank you to all of you who are supporting this channel, that have pressed that subscribe button and that lowly comment every single week. I hugely appreciate it. And I'm going to call all of you viewers my tiny tropical try. And to say thank you, I'm going to launch a new feature as part of the tiny tropical garden, where I'm going to share your gardens with the thousands of people that watch these videos. It doesn't matter if your garden is tiny, a balcony, or even just one pot. I want to see what all of you are doing with your spaces, whatever space that might be. We all love looking at other people's gardens to get inspired and get ideas. And it's great to share your garden with other people because it makes all of your own hard work pay off. So if you want to get involved, send me photos of your garden to tinytropicalgarden at gmail.com. I've put the email address in the description as well. And tell me who you are, where your garden is, and what you like to grow. And I would love to share everybody else's hard work with the rest of the people in this tiny tropical tribe community. And to kick off this new feature this week, I'm sharing a garden that belongs to Lisa and Nathan, who live in Bristol in the UK. Lisa and Nathan have been kind enough to share with us pictures that show the progress of their garden. You can see it's a similar size space to my own tiny tropical garden. And it looks to me like they've used plenty of pots to maximize that planting space around the hard landscaping. And just look how quick and impressive that lush tropical look is. They've used banana plants in the large glossy leaves of fatties to get that jungle look with impressive hits of color from huge exotic blooms like these lilies. And this is how their garden looked just before they moved house. The moment we all dread, digging up and moving our plants to a new spot. And it looks as though these are the plants Lisa and Nathan decided to take with them to their new garden. But what's their new space like? Just look at the potential in this new space. And Lisa and Nathan have been kind enough to send us photos of their progress so far. And it looks to me like they're digging a base for a greenhouse. What a dream. And it looks as though work has started on the new curvy beds in this exciting new space. Hopefully, We'll get more updates from Lisa and Nathan. But thank you to both of you for sharing your photos with all of us and hopefully your garden will look as great as your old one did before you moved. If you'd like your garden to be featured, send your photos to the email address in the description. And just this minute, I've taken an international delivery of something exciting. But I'm not going to open it yet. You'll have to wait for the next video to find out what's in this box. It's something I've wanted since seeing a lot of others grow it on Instagram. Can you guess what it is? See you all next week.